internal basketball game was held at the company. Lou, as one of the few accounting department representatives, was compelled to take part in this game. Because the game was so intense, it was difficult to avoid unnecessary injuries. During the confrontation phase, Lou was hit hard by the opponent and lost his balance. When he fell on the ground, he was unable to stand and sprained his ankle. Lou couldn't get up at the time and had to be helped by everyone around him. He went to the hospital to have it checked out. The ankle was slightly deviated, and while it was not a serious injury, being hospitalized was unavoidable. Hospitalization was tedious. Lou did not have a girlfriend, so only a few close friends paid him a visit. He had to kill time the rest of the day by playing on his phone or watching TV. Lou wanted to go to the bathroom right after dinner that night, but walking was now extremely difficult. While walking down the hallway, Lou ran into head nurse May, who knew Lou was going to the bathroom. The nurse informed them that the water pipe in the toilet on the fifth floor was broken and in need of repair, and he was directed to another floor. As a result, Lou had to take the elevator down to the fourth floor to use the restroom. Lou looked around and noticed that there were no lights here. It looked like this was the first floor where an experimental device was placed. Lou looked around and noticed an area with what appeared to be a toilet that could be used. Lou rushed through the bathroom and was washing his hands in the sink. In the mirror, Lou noticed someone passing by. Although it was impossible to tell who it was, it looked like an elderly man. Lou was unconcerned about this. After washing his hands, he turned to another corner of the corridor and pulled out a cigarette to smoke because smoking was not permitted in the room, so he would smoke one cigarette every time he was going to the toilet. Lou unintentionally looked towards the end of the corridor while taking a breath. He smirked slightly and felt strange. The old man hadn't left the floor yet. He was standing in the corridor's corner, turning his back on him. Judging by the old man's appearance, he would have encountered a difficult situation, so he came here alone to vent his rage. During his hospital stay, he heard many heartfelt stories from patients and their families. When he finished smoking, he extinguished the cigarette butt and quietly exited the room. He went to the elevator area to return to the fifth floor, but he was surprised when the elevator door was about to close. The old man he had just met on the other side of the corridor while smoking refused to leave and remained in this corner of the corridor in the same posture. Lou approached the old man. He didn't want to be intrusive, but today he wouldn't be silent. Lou handed the old man a cigarette and said, Old man, whatever you're up to, let's start with a cigarette, right? The old man ignored Lou and refused to budge. Lou couldn't understand, so he moved close and only saw the old man mumbling something. After a long period of listening, he heard what sounded like a string of numbers, 9917. Lou was perplexed, so he shifted his position to the old man's side, intending to ask him what the numbers meant. But when he got to the old man's side, he discovered that the old man had a problem. He didn't appear to have a left hand, his left sleeve was bare. Lou immediately detected a strong odor of blood. When Lou looked again, there were no feet under the old man's trousers leg, and blood was oozing out from there and his mouth continued to mutter the previous numbers. His face muscles twisted. He looked so angry. Lou was scared of crutches and turned away when he saw him like that. He staggered into the elevator. Thankfully, the old man did not pursue Lou. He was still standing at the same place. When Lou returned to the fifth floor, he felt like a lost soul, devoid of emotion. Lou ran into Nurse May again, who was standing in front of him puzzled. The nurse was wondering why he looked so strange, so she asked him if he was in any pain. Lou wanted to speak at first, but he hesitated and then found an excuse to give a vague answer before returning to his room. He believed that what occurred was insignificant and that he should simply return to his room, get a good night's sleep and forget about it all. However, Lou thought it was too simple when in the middle of the night he was woken up by the voice of someone reading the familiar numbers. 
the sound came from behind him, sending shivers down his spine. He sat up abruptly despite the fact that the room was dark, but the contours of his face made Lou see who it was. The old man's face remained the same as before, angry, with his teeth grinding and his mouth constantly repeating the numbers. Lou screamed and tried to flee instinctively, but due to the pain in his leg, he lost control and fell on the ground. When he collapsed, the lights in the room turned on, indicating that this was not a dream. Nurse May's voice came from the door. Perhaps Lou's scream drew the attention of Nurse May, who dashed over to investigate. Lou couldn't believe what he had just witnessed, but when he got up, he noticed that the old man by the bed had vanished. May was extremely concerned after witnessing Lou's unusual actions. The nurse rushed to help Lou up. She suspected he had fallen because his leg was hurting. Lou inquired of Nurse May about the presence of an elderly man in the room. Surprisingly, May stated that there was no one else in the room. Lou claimed that an old man was standing beside his bed just now. Nurse May noticed Lou's panic and attempted to calm him down. Nurse May's reaction surprised him. Did he really see it incorrectly? Suddenly, he remembered the strange number sequence he had heard. He inquired of Nurse May as to whether she was familiar with the sequence. He claimed that the old man he met only repeated these numbers over and over, as if he was trying to communicate with him. Nurse May believed he was stressed and advised him to get more rest. But she still jotted down the figures before leaving. Unable to sleep and fearful of turning off the lights, he remained awake in the hospital room until the morning. The next day at noon Nurse May arrived and informed them that she had investigated the strange number. It was in fact the patient number. It was the code of an elderly man who died in a hospital many years ago from a serious illness and was once in his patient room. She comforted him with a smile. Such things happened all the time in hospitals. It was not uncommon. It turned out that Nurse May, like Lou, had the same experiences when she first started working at the hospital. But the more she got used to it, the less these spirits would harm her, just make her a bit nervous. Some people could sense spirits, while others couldn't. However, anyone encountering this for the first time would be equally terrified. Lou was discharged half a month later, and when he walked out of the hospital, he felt much better. It was just terrifying encounters like these that everyone would have while staying at the hospital.